Radical Health Radio family, welcome back. Today, I am delivering my top 12 tips to make sure that you can stay sick and fat. And you might be like, what? I thought this was a health podcast, but what I'm doing today is I'm trying to break your brain. I'm using a little trick called inversion thinking, kind of like reverse psychology, to present you with the ways in which you can stay sick and fat to the best of your ability, which will then reveal the solution when we flip it on its head and reverse the order. So this is a fun one. And without further ado, let's just get into the show. Hello friends, welcome back to the show. Today, I am going to be sharing with you the 12 best ways to stay sick and fat. Now, all of a sudden, you might be wondering, what's Ste up to here? We don't want to stay sick and fat, but we're actually playing on a concept that's very, very powerful. So Charlie Munger, who's a philanthropist and investor, has a famous talk called How to Live a Miserable Life. And this essentially is playing on something called inversion thinking. The idea here is that our brains, because they have this inherent negativity bias, they're really good at looking for threats because of our evolutionary programming, that we're better at looking for problems than we are at looking for solutions. So that if we go highlighting all the problems, essentially how to live a miserable life, how to stay sick and fat, that the solution reveals itself in doing the opposite. So this is a question I often pose to my clients a lot. I would say, okay, how are you going to set yourself up for the worst possible day? Tell me everything you would do to have the worst day imaginable. And then they'll rattle off a bunch of stuff like, well, I'd have a terrible night of sleep. Um, you know, the night before I would you know, wake up, I'd skip my morning routine, and then they'd rattle off all of these things. And I'd say, great. Now, the problems that you would easy able to find reveal the solution if we flip them on the head. So we're going to play around with this concept today in giving you the 12 best ways to stay sick and fat and stick around until the end because we'll rerun through the list after going through it and you'll see that the solution will reveal itself. So let's have a little bit of fun with this one. So kicking off the list, the best number one way to make sure that you stay sick and fat is to start tomorrow. Oh, next week or next month or you know what maybe even better wait for january 1st of 2024 but whatever you do don't start now always wait for some moment in the future that never arrives this will guarantee you can stay sick and fat number two expect overnight results okay when you expect overnight results, you're basically guaranteeing that you'll feel frustrated and disheartened. You'll feel like a failure. So it's going to be amazing for making sure that you stay sick and fat. So always ensure that you want overnight results and you should expect to have what you want right now with a little bit of effort. Number three, measure your success and self-worth by the scale. So every morning when you wake up, I want the first thing for you to do is to jump on that thing on the bathroom floor, assess your relationship to gravity, and then let that dictate your mood and your self-worth, right? If it's gone up a little bit and it makes you feel like an awful human, good. That's going to make sure that you, you know, you have a terrible relationship with your food and body and you'll be in, uh, you'll be able to ensure that you can stay sick and fat. So always quantify your success on that ridiculous thing we call the scale on the bathroom floor. Number four Make sure you build your diet on heart healthy seed oils and whole grains, right? The, the bulk of your diet should be built on what we know is heart healthy, those, those yummy veggie oils, those seed oils, those canola oils. You see the little stamp of approval, right, from the American Heart Association, heart healthy seed oils heart healthy whole grains. These should be the bulk of your diet. We just, we want all of that inflammation. We want all of that oxidative stress. We want to make sure we're chronically hungry. We really want a lot of unstable, you know, inflammation driving fat in our bodies and absolutely unequivocally fear those animal fats, those dangerous, those poisonous, those terrible cholesterol rich, saturated fat rich, red meat containing fats. You wanna stay away from those. We want only the poofers, the seed oils and the gluten containing grains. Bonus for some refined sugar, some high fructose corn syrup, good bit of gut damage. This is gonna go uh, a, a pretty good way in making sure you can stay sick and fat. Number five, take health advice from sick people. 
If you want what everybody else has, which for the most part is ill health, then listen to them and do what everybody else does. So make sure you get your diet and health advice from obviously sick people because they know what to do to remain sick and fat. They preaching it, they're practicing it, they're living it. Let's be just like them. Also as a bonus, make sure you take your life advice from a sick culture too. This will just really make sure that you're also very unhappy and unfulfilled on top of being sick and fat. So you can really get a double whammy there by listening to the experts because they're obviously doing uh, such a good job at this, right? Number six, maximize mouth pleasure. Every single bite of food should be just a whirlwind of dopaminergic hyperpalatability. We want the most sweet and salty. We want crunchy and gooey. We want all the flavors, all the kind of hedonic urges to be satisfied with every bite of food. You only live once, right? Why not just smash all of the delicious snacks, all of those things? And the beautiful thing about those foods is they're so hyper palatable. They're so calorie dense, but not nutrient dense that you'll be able to eat tons of them, loads of them. They'll keep you hungry. And this is going to really help you staying sick and fat. So maximize that mouth pleasure with every bite, my friends. Number seven, only stick to the plan when you feel like it. That discipline thing, doing things you know you need to do when you don't want to do them, we don't want any of that. Don't do the discipline. Only act when you feel motivated. If you don't feel like doing the hard thing, don't do it. There's no point. Relinquish to your lower self. Listen to the voice of your inner bitch. Don't do the hard things. Stay under the covers. Hit the snooze button. Order the Uber Eats. Do not grocery shop and prepare. Just listen to your urges and always honor those and take the path of least resistance every single time, my friends. Number eight, remember that chronic cardio is king. You don't want to lift weights. You know, that muscle stuff will make you bulky. Muscles, it's, it's too good at revving up our metabolism and protecting our skeletons and being a glucose sink and all of that good stuff. So we don't want that. We just want maximum stress with kind of poor results. So ideally just, you know, overstress your joints, pound the pavements, get on the treadmill. In fact, the treadmill or the treadmill in the gym under artificial lighting is probably the best in big padded shoes and just maximize the stress that you you, you can build here. I think chronic cardio is going to make sure that you don't see the results that you don't want from exercise, which is, you know, increased insulin resist, increased insulin sensitivity and better body fat mass and increased muscle. We don't want any of that stuff. So cardio, chronic cardio is is king, that perfect balance of just stressful enough. Number nine, make sure that you have no boundaries. Say yes to everything, like everything. Free cake in the office at work, yes. Uber Eats tonight instead of cooking dinner, yes. Snooze alarm, yes. Going to that social event that you don't want to go to, yes. Eating dessert, yes. An extra shot of tequila late at night, yes. Always say yes. What's the point in saying no, YOLO, right? Always say yes. See, boundaries are for strong people. And if we really want to be sick and fat, we need to be weak. So we need to tear down those boundaries and say yes to everything. This will make sure that your yes has no value and you don't stand up for yourself or what you really want. And you can make sure that you stay in that perfect zone of sick and fat. Number 10, find a non-supportive partner or a friend group. Whatever you do, don't surround yourself by supportive people. You want to surround yourself with negatrons, with mood hoovers. If you have a spouse, ideally a good dose of shame will really help you stay sick and fat so that when you have this inclination to say no to pizza Fridays because you'd rather cook a healthy, uh, delicious animal-based meal, that they're going to guilt trip you and actually make you order the food and, and it just curtails lovely on the having no boundaries and making sure that you say yes to that. You know, when you don't want to just play video games for six hours and smoke weed with your friends and maybe go to the gym, make sure that they guilt trip you into not doing that because what's the point in doing the gym? What are you going to go, go, go lift those weights and build some muscle? Remember, we don't want to do that. So make sure that the group that you have around you are very negative, that they're not healthy and that they show you the way and practice what they preach so that they too and you can stay sick and fat. Number 11, optimize for maximum comfort. Always choose comfort. Don't ever seek out novel experiences like the heat or the cold. Don't do any of the hormetic stresses. The cold plunges that you see people doing, the saunas, pfft, 
don't do that. That's for healthy people. We're trying to stay sick and fat. We want to be in that zone of comfortable complacency as much as humanly possible. We want to really just make our bed and lie in it in the comfort crisis. Never go against your mind again. Remember, don't do discipline. Only act when you feel like it and make sure everything is just comfortable. You know, perfectly climate control rooms, comfy footwear, comfy clothes, comfy food. Comfort is king. Maximize it. Find yourself a nice old couch and get comfortable. And number 12, always choose the magic pill or the quick fix. Don't, whatever you do, look at root cause behaviors. Don't look at your habits. Don't look at your mindset. Don't look at your choices. That's not what we're doing here. We are looking for quick fixes. We are looking for the magic pill. Maybe what you need is a skinny tea detox. Maybe what you need is a juice cleanse. Maybe what you need is a pill from your doctor. Uh, maybe what you need is a is a sweet sweat body wrap so you can you know you know get more fat out of those cells. Whatever you do, though, again, don't address the behaviors. Don't address the habits. You know that that's that's not what we're doing here. We're looking for quick fixes. Remember rule. Number two, we want overnight results. And rule number 12 of expecting the quick fix, well, these can get us those quicker. And then when they don't work, we will be frustrated and we will ensure that we can stay in the zone of sick, stuck, and fat and complete our mission. So there you go, my friends. Those are my top 12 tips for staying sick and fat. And I hope you see the game that we're playing now as we go back into these rules or these laws, reverse engineer them and see where the solution actually live. Now, before we do that, I'm sure that at least in one of those rules, you kind of caught yourself in a bit of a bind being like, oh, see, kind of got me a little bit on that one because I do do that. Now, that's great. I'm not here to trigger you or call you out. I'm here to have a little bit of fun with you and highlight the problem, which reveals the solution. So whichever one kind of like got your uh, back up against the wall there a little bit, pay attention to that and you will already see the solution because it will reveal itself. But let's go back through that list. Number one, start tomorrow. Of course not. Tomorrow never comes. There's never going to be a right moment to do it. It's never going to feel like the right time. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. You don't want to be sick and fat. You want to be healthy and thriving. So you need to start now, today. There is no tomorrow. There is no next week. There's certainly no next year. Forget about that. All you have is now. Start today. No expecting overnight results. It took you decades to get here, years to get here. And if you expect overnight results, like I said, you're just going to be frustrated. Healing takes time. You need to be in this for the long haul. These 21 day programs, 30 day to shred, you know, thinking you can just choose the magic pill and fix things overnight is not going to work, right? Build in this long term mindset, right? Build in this future pacing of knowing that it's going to take a little bit of time. But guess what? Your body wants to come back to health. It actually wants to come back to health way more than it ever wanted to get into a diseased state. And therefore, it will heal quicker then it got sick. So if it took you 20 years to get to this point where you're a little under the weather, insulin resistant, sick, you've got autoimmune conditions, there's no reason why it takes 20 years to get back to health. Now, it can take a matter of months if you do this right, but it's not going to happen in a day. It's certainly not going to happen with one pill or potion. So please don't expect overnight results. We've got to play the long game here. Number three was measure your success and self-worth by the scale. I think most of you honestly would be well served by throwing that ridiculous thing away. I mean, if if you're a competitor in something, if you have weight classes, if you have a healthy relationship with it, I think it's fine to keep it. But in my experience, most people give so much power to the scale. They allow the self-worth to be determined by the relationship to gravity and they ignore all of the other signals. They might look better. The skin is clearer. They are stronger in the gym. They have less bloat. The clothes fit better. Five wins, but the scale didn't move. Brr, rubbish. I'm failing. This isn't working. Or God forbid, the scale goes up a couple of pounds because you built some muscle and oh my God, it's going in the wrong direction. What are we going to do? I feel like a failure. I must starve myself. This isn't working. Maybe I need to jump to veganism. Ah! Throw it away. <laughs> or be very, very careful about your relationship to the scale. It doesn't really matter. Quantify how you look, how you feel, how you perform, your health, your vitality, your freedom from disease, those are much better metrics for success in my estimation. 
Build your diet on heart healthy seed oils and whole grains. Eh, eh, nope, thank you. Get those out of the diet. Those are driving gut distress, oxidative stress, inflammation. They're robbing you of health and vitality. They're stripping you of nutrients, micronutrients, and minerals. We build our diet on the animal based backbone protein, fats, carbohydrates from nature, meat organs, fruit, raw dairy, honey. That's what you want to be building your diet on. Not these so-called heart healthy things, because we actually see when we challenge the dogma that there's no reason to indicate that saturated fat and cholesterol are not heart healthy foods. These are the foods that we evolved on. And in the absence of industrialized foods, these are heart healthy because we get healthier by consuming them. Number five was take health advice from sick people or culture. Of course, if you see the memes going around of our public health experts, you almost have to laugh because it looks like a parody. Now you see these crazy extremists, people like myself, people like Paul Saladino, people like many influencers in this space and advocates in this space that are pushing what you would call is an alternative message, but are healthy, obviously healthy, obviously thriving. Now, propped up against the conventional narratives, they're dangerous. Dangerous people spreading misinformation that's going to hurt people. But they're significantly healthier than the people following the dogma, following the way that it should be done. And that should tell you something because it isn't necessarily about what you say. It's about what you show. And there is a lot of healthy people. And if they're healthy in a world that wants them sick, they probably should be listened to. Now, don't take anybody's word for anything. Listen to them, remain open-minded, test the theory for yourself, but probably not smart to listen to obviously sick people for your health advice and probably not smart to listen to a sick and broken culture for what it means to live a good life. Crazy idea, I know. Number six, maximize mouth pleasure. This is an interesting one because I would actually say that an animal-based diet is full of mouth pleasure. I mean, who doesn't love gnawing on a, on a ribeye covered in flaky sea salt and having some delicious pineapple for dessert, some guacamole or something? I mean, that is mouth pleasure. But my jab at this was the hyperpalatable version of mouth pleasure, the chocolate lava cake, for example, which is perfectly designed to have it all going on, right? It's got a crunchy exterior, a gooey interior. It's hot. It's cold with the ice cream on top. You've got like a caramel drizzle and you've got some crunchy walnuts. I mean, come on. We're not designed to be able to not overeat that stuff. Now, when you practice single ingredient foods, as much as they do provide mouth pleasure and health and the tasty AF, well, we're still not going to really overeat that. You can't gorge yourself to death on ribeyes and mango. You just won't do it. You'll reach palate fatigue and it still can be delicious. But please don't eat like a child. Please don't eat like you're trying to pursue maximum mouth pleasure in every bite of food because those hyper palatable foods are incredibly easy to overeat and they're going to get you in trouble. Number seven, only stick to the plan when you feel like it. <clears throat> Again, discipline is required on this journey. Look, if you feel like it, do it. That's amazing. But understand that motivation, aka doing what you want when you want to do it, is actually kind of a rare feeling for most people. Most of the time, most people don't want to do what they know they need to do in order to become who they want to be. Therefore, discipline enters the chat and discipline eats motivation for breakfast. Discipline is doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't want to do it. And you are going to need that in a world that wants to pull on all your puppet strings of hedonism and get you stuck on that never-ending dopamine treadmill. You're going to need some discipline in this game, my friends. If you have some motivation, amazing. If you have the combination of two, amazing. Check the previous podcast that I did on this, the Discipline and Motivation podcast. You'll love it. La la la, where are we? Uh, number eight, chronic cardio is king, right? Don't lift those weights, don't build that muscle. No siree, we are building muscle. Muscle is the organ of longevity. It's probably our most prized possession as a metabolic tissue. Not only does it raise your metabolism, it's literally a, a very metabolically active organ to have. It protects your skeleton. It gives glucose somewhere to go. When you do indulge in carbohydrates, it allows you to look good and feel good and move good. So it's ensuring against quality of life for the long haul. It's going to protect your skeleton if you fall over and protect from things like sarcopenia. It feels good to move your muscles. Your body is designed to move, to put it under load, to get stronger. 
Muscle has the highest density of cells that contain mitochondria, which produce ATP. So you could also see having more muscle as having more batteries, if you will, more capacity to generate more energy. So if you feel in a slightly low vibrant state, then building muscle actually can increase your capacity to raise your baseline level of uh, energy and excitement for life and vigor and that like attack energy to go out and just adventure and hike and lift the weights and do the jujitsu or throw the kettlebells or you know continue running right? I'm, I'm not you know fully attacking running when i said chronic cardio i think the issue is just these cardio queens and kings these cardio bunnies that you know just just five miles one week and oh right the results have stopped coming from that so now we're up to seven or up to ten we're never doing push-ups or squats or deadlifts or any of the primal pattern movements so build some muscle, get under that barbell, move your body under load. That's going to help you thrive. It's going to help you be really healthy and it's going to help you with all your body composition goals. Number 10, number nine, sorry, have no boundaries. Sorry, we need boundaries. You can refer back to the boundaries podcast that we did, but boundaries are key. You need to learn to say no. Your yes has no value until you learn to say no. And sometimes saying no means saying yes to what matters most. So the free cake in the office, instead of saying, yeah, okay, on Susan's birthday, I'll have the free cake, is no, that food doesn't serve me right now. There's some discipline in there. There's some self-awareness and there's a boundary. I don't celebrate with bad food that doesn't serve me. That's a healthy boundary. Not going to all the social events, not saying yes to the useless invites on your calendar. Say no to more things so you can say yes to the things that really matter. Number 10, your non-supportive partner, your non-supportive friend groups might be a difficult conversation to have here. Might be some distance that needed and might be a boundary that needs to be set. You need to surround yourself with inspiring people, uplifting people. And if those people close to you are not supportive, then you just need to have a healthy conversation with them about how you're not on that same path as them anymore. You're not on that same journey as them anymore. You can still love them, you can still honor them, you can still respect them, but you want something more for yourself and you are the product of your environment. You become the five people you spend the most time around. You hang around five smokers, drinkers, stressed out negative people, you become the fifth or the sixth, whatever it would be. If you surround yourself with inspiring figures, healthy figures, fit figures, entrepreneurial people, you become that too. We absorb the values of our environment. So please find a supportive friend group. If you don't have it right now or a supportive spouse or partner, have the difficult conversations and then go find it. It's on you to find this. You need to go and seek these people out. They're not just going to come into your life, you know, and sometimes that's going to mean you need to grow up and show up and end certain relationships or step away and distance healthily from certain relationships so you can go find the kind of environments that you can thrive in. Number 11, optimize for maximum comfort. No, thank you. We need to embrace discomfort. Growth begins at the end of our comfort zone, right? There is no growth in comfort and no comfort in growth which means we need to get uncomfortable in order to grow. This is, this is just a universal truth. If you reflect on your own life, where you've grown the most was probably through discomfort, whether that's physically in the gym, whether that's mentally going through a very challenging time, whether that's spiritually having your life shattered and like rebuilding back up. Discomfort is the thing that expands our range and tests us. It's, it's where we learn about who we are and what we're capable of. I wish, no, I don't know if I wish this, but I'd hope that life was easier for a lot of people a lot of the time. But the truth of it is, I think we we need problems to sink our teeth into too. We, we came here for this, you know, did you expect life to be easy? You'd be bored very quickly if you had everything that your heart desires. You would then create problems to solve because you need them. The spirit, the soul, the mind, it needs problems to solve like the body needs food. So you have to seek discomfort. And sometimes life is gonna give it to you. <laughs> sometimes you're not seeking it. Sometimes it's unchosen suffering, but we can also microdose our chosen suffering. So yeah, whether that's the little things like jumping in a cold plunge every once in a while, doing some breath work, seeking out the sauna, going on the extra long run, doing the extra hard CrossFit class, doing the extra few rounds at jujitsu, um, not using all your climate control devices, you know, sitting on the floor instead of this, if the sofa, etc. Embrace discomfort because that's where you start to grow. And last but not least, always choose the magic pill or the quick fix. Be wary of the magic pills and the quick fix because in my experience, they don't really exist. 
There is nothing out there that is sold as a silver bullet that actually does what it says on the tin because what matters most is what you do most. And there is no supplement, there is no potion, there is no mantra that you can say in the mirror that is going to make up for your habits, your lifestyle, your choices, and what you do moment to moment, day to day. It's cool if you find supplements that help you. I have a stack of them behind me. They're awesome. Buy them all. Enjoy them all. They're going to help you, but don't expect those to save you either, right? What you put in your mouth, the votes that you're taking for your health, the movement, the sleep, the stress management, the sun, the play, all of these other things are foundationally a lot more important than any extract of any berry or any new thing that was found in the jungle of Ecuador and hand harvested by female monks and blessed by, you know, the shikanas and then sent over to the US on the backs of eagles and then packaged with you with love and intention. Those things are all great. If you want to use them, amazing, but don't forget the basics. So there you have it, my friends. There's a little bit of a fun podcast for you today, a little bit of a different one. Uh, there's my 12 ways to make sure you stay sick and fat and the reverse engineered 12 solutions to make sure that you thrive. No callers today. Just going to leave you with that one. Going to let you sit on it a little bit. Going to let you percolate on it a little bit. Let me know if I caught you a little bit in the comments. Which one was a little bit like, ah, hand up, little guilty on this one. I'll let me know what, what you enjoyed about that podcast. Share it with your friends if they think they could do with a, a loving uh, gut punch from the heart, of course, a healthy kick up the bum because I love you, because I care about you, because I want you to be healthy. And we will see you at the same time, same place next week, my friends. Stay radical. Peace out. All right, friends, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Radical Health Radio. We got a fresh new podcast for you every Wednesday. If you enjoyed the show, consider liking, subscribing, reviewing, and rating us on your podcast platform. It helps to spread this message of radical health. We'll see you next week.